What's up, everybody? If you've been following along in this series, I've talked to you about what a vector database is, how to set up your Quadrant Cloud account, how to create your first cluster, create your first collection, and upsert your data as points into your collection. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is vector search. So what is vector search? So vector search is essentially a way to find similar points in a data set by comparing their vector representations. What it's doing is actually focusing on semantic similarity rather than exact keyword matching, though you can use a combination of those. But if we're just strictly comparing vectors and their embeddings, it's looking at that semantic similarity. The important part that we need to discuss now is how do we search for vectors? We search for vectors using similarity metrics and a few key metrics that we're going to talk about, cosine similarity, dot product, Manhattan distance, Euclidean distance. Cosine similarity is useful when only the direction of the vectors matter, not necessarily their magnitude. And this is one of the most commonly used measures in text similarity for finding documents or clusters of documents. And this just measures the cosine angle between vectors. A dot product is going to consider both the direction and the magnitude of the vector. And this is useful for recommendation systems where a magnitude is going to signify a preference strength. But if you normalize the vectors down to unit vectors, then cosine similarity and dot product are actually almost the same thing. There's also Euclidean distance. So Euclidean distance is just going to measure the straight line distance between vectors. And this is great for image similarity where differences in features are, are critical. There's also Manhattan distance. And what Manhattan distance does is that it's calculating the sum of the absolute difference between vectors. And this is used for binary or categorical features. So it's one thing to search for vectors, but it's another thing to navigate this high dimensional space. And so one way to do that is using HNSW, which is hierarchical, navigable, small worlds, and ANN, which is approximate nearest neighbors. These two are efficient ways to search through massive collections of vectors and traverse this really high dimensional vector space. So how does this work? So I've linked here to a great resource that I recommend checking out. It really goes in depth. That's where I borrow some of the pictures from as well. So if you want to in depth detail into what HNSW is and how it works, I'll give you a high level overview of it. We're using the K nearest neighbors algorithm to place each vector in the graph as a node linked to the closest K neighbors. Nodes connected to their nearest neighbors forms path through the space. But then we have this layered graph structure. So nodes that have this really high concentration of connections, these get bumped up to this next level. And we get this hierarchical structure until we get all the way to the top where we have layers that have fewer nodes. And these are going to be like the entry points into the search space. And it's going to speed up navigation through this vector space. Let's go ahead now and just search for some vectors. So again, of course, we need to instantiate our quadrant client, load in our environment variables, make sure that we have connected to the client. And we're going to reuse the function that we used here to get text embedding. Because keep in mind that when we're searching against our vector database, we need to make sure that whatever embedding model you use to ingest your data into the vector database, make sure that you're using that same embedding model to embed the queries so that you can do the search. Let's go ahead and do some search here. And with Quadrant, it's quite easy. So we have our client here. We're going to use a dot search method of the client, pass in the collection that we want to search and the query vector. And in this case, the query vector that I'm going to search is the summary. And and I'm going to get the text embedding for this. So I'm going to search summary for machine learning and sound and diffusion. And then I'm going to get the following elements from the payload, the summary title and author. And I'm going to limit myself here to just two vectors. We get back these scored point objects. And you can see here we've got the score that represents the degree of similarity between my search query and what was retrieved. We can also see that we got the payload as well, which has the list of authors, the summary, and the text of the entire chunk. Uh, so if you have a whole bunch of keys in your payload, but there's only a couple that you want to exclude, uh, you can use this payload selector exclude method. You can see the same pattern here. Search the collection name, search the query vector, and we only want back everything except the chunk and text ID. And so you can see that the payload here is now excluding the chunk. We could also create more interesting filters. And this is useful for the situations where it's impossible to express all of the features of the object in the embedding. You'll see in the documentation, there's a bunch of other clauses that you can use, must not, conditions like match accept, nested 
key. And this is just going to allow you to form some really rich, complex queries to help search your vector database. Let's create a filter. The condition is on the authors. And I need to make sure that the authors has Dong Yu as one of the authors. And I'm going to limit myself to five vectors to be returned. And you can see here that this is what we have. So important point to note here, vectors and embeddings are just really the entry point to, to having a more robust kind of search mechanism. Like text embeddings are, are useful by all means, they're incredibly useful for a semantic search, but they have their limitations. If I was to query my vector database with something like, give me a summary of the types of sales that happened in the last 30 days, a text embedding in itself isn't going to be helpful in that situation because the, the, the embedding is not going to give me all the information that I want. Really what I want is to restrict the days that I want to look at from today to today minus 30. And then I want to do a summary over the types of different products that were sold and, and get that out. That's where information like payload is going to be useful because I can set a date field on my payload and really filter in a more kind of SQL-esque type of way. I'm going to create a wrapper around the search function. There's a few arguments that we see here. We're going to have a named vector to search, the input query, the limit to the number of returned vectors. Uh, of course, I need to pass in the client and the collection as well. So we'll have our input vector get embedded. Then we'll do our search results. We'll pass the collection name, the query vector, the limit, the payload that we want to return, and then also whatever other keyword arguments you want to pass in to the search function here. And we're going to parse our results here. We'll hit search and we can see here that we get a nice dictionary with everything that we asked for. So we've got the similarity score, summary, titles, source, and the authors as well. You can also set a threshold for the similarity as well using the score threshold argument. So in this case, just giving back everything that has a, a similarity of at least 0.51. And you can see here that this helps further filter down our results. And that's it. That's basics of vector search. And what we've learned over the last few videos, we're going to build on and we're going to start doing more and more interesting and complex things with Quadrant, with vector search. There's a few more basics that we need to cover and we'll cover that over the next few videos. But once we've got all these basics done, we're going to really start doing some fun, interesting stuff with multimodal search with cross modal retrieval and start learning how to build rag systems without really needing to rely on frameworks like llama index or lane chain as great as they are it's good to know how to use this stuff without those layers of abstraction make sure you're subscribing to the channel make sure you got the bell notifications hit so that you can be notified when the next video comes out i'll see you in the next one bye